Happy, happy Friday evening, everyone. It is the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video. We call it Weather for Weather. Geeks, nerds, weather enthusiasts, those who like a lot of detail in their forecasts, this is the video in which I have unlimited time on TV. I'm restricted by time to down to a couple of minutes. On this video, I can talk for as long as I want. I haven't had to produce a lot of long videos lately because, of course, the weather's been, frankly, kind of dull since we had our snow and ice last weekend. It was on this date back in 1948 that we did not have a day like today in which it just rained. We had snow. In fact, it was one of the biggest one-day snow totals on record for our area. The midnight to midnight snow total on January 24th, 1948, 17.2 inches worth of snow. We haven't had anything like that in quite some time. Too warm for any snow today. We've had the rain. Now, I've got a couple of questions on uh, on Facebook about uh, the intensity of the rain today. And it's, it's the kind of day in which we sometimes see what we call bright banding on the radar. What does that mean? Well, sometimes when we have rain at these temperatures and it's colder aloft by a fair amount, you can get melting snowflakes and ice pellets being hit by the radar beam. And that returns a brighter color on the radar. It makes it look like it's raining harder than it actually is. And so rainfall totals today have not been through the roof, even though it's been raining for several hours. Most of this rain's been fairly light. Occasionally it does pick up in intensity. It's gonna keep on raining this evening. We still have this to get through before the rain tapers off as we go through the overnight hours tonight. Where's the cold air? Well, by late January standards, it's not on the playing field here in the lower 48 states. Even in the nation's ice box, it's 23 this evening, 19 in Bismarck. There's no Arctic air across the lower 48. It's been much colder in Alaska lately, and now, of course, it's supposed to be cold in Alaska in January, but Alaska's had some incredible warmth over the last couple of years during all seasons. This uh, stretch in which we've been warm has been a little more typical of winter in Alaska. It's 31 below zero in Bettles, up towards Dead Horse, inside the Arctic Circle. It's 13 below this evening. All right, back here at home, just some scattered showers once we lose this steady rain as we go past midnight into the overnight. If you're up in Adam early Saturday morning, Rain shower around, maybe a wet snowflake trying to mix in. Now, a lot of the daylight hours tomorrow will be pretty uneventful. Just a lot of clouds. Occasionally, the sky may try to brighten a little bit, but it's not going to be much going on during the daylight hours. Now, as we get into the evening and this uh, disturbance pivots through, let me actually back this up to Saturday evening. What we have is a little upper level disturbance cruising through. That's the dash black line. There's going to be some light snow that breaks out, but temperatures are going to be around 33, 34-ish and the snow is going to be light and the ground is going to be pretty warm. So I'm expecting everything to just be wet, at least on paved surfaces. Could someone's grass get covered with this? Maybe. And I can't even rule out someone trying to squeeze out a slushy three quarters of an inch, maybe on their, on their lawn, but not expecting problems on the roads. Sunday also uneventful during the daylight hours. Another little disturbance will come down through the lakes, pick up a little lake moisture. Of course, there's no uh, ice on Lake Erie right now. And there'll be some lake enhancement with this and up to an inch worth of new snow might even occur in some spots Sunday evening before we just uh, have some clouds and some flurries into the day on Monday. So here's a look at our models for the weekend snow. Again, late in the day Saturday, some small accumulations. Late in the day Sunday into Sunday night, maybe some small accumulations. Neither should be real impactful, but especially once you're up towards Route 87 in Trumbull County and over into parts of Mercer County, or again, a little lake enhancement. I'm not going to be surprised if some people's yards get covered with snow this weekend during the two little events. But the farther south you go, this is pretty much just no big deal at all once you're down into the southern part of our television viewing area. All right, uh, longer range this evening. Real quick look at uh, this evening's run of the European model for the next couple of weeks, showing lack of Arctic air through the end of the month. Compared to last year, this is a piece of cake for the end of January. We had really cold weather. The coldest weather of last winter was right at the end of January. But it's uh, not going to be the case this year as Arctic air is nowhere to be found through Groundhog Day. Now, as we get into the, the new work week beyond Groundhog Day, this is the 4th, 5th, there's going to be a chunk of Arctic air that comes down into the Pacific Northwest, into the Northern Rockies, and then makes its way in a modified form east. Now, does this look super impressive to me? No, but uh, it probably will be a few days in which we at least have a chance of seeing a couple of days with temperatures below zero. But... As I've been talking about lately in uh, this video and on my weather blog, ericwfmj.com, uh, I don't see much in the way of sustained cold during the first week of February. Now, beyond that, I think it's a volatile pattern. 
I think odds favor a real back and forth pattern for February and maybe more frequent cold shots than we've gotten used to so far this winter. And February might also end up being our snowiest month of the winter. It's not a big grand statement considering how little snow we've had in December and January. Speaking of my weather blog, in case you missed it last night, I put up a, a blog post on ericwfmj.com. Uh, click on blog uh, when you're on there. It's We've got a few different sections on the on, on my weather blog, but if you actually click on the word that says blog, you can go to the written material, and I put up a post explaining a little bit why this winter forecast uh, kind of stunk this year, um, why it's busting for me and busting for many, and it has to do with uh, weather patterns on the other side of the globe, I think. That's my theory, anyway. So you can read about that on ericwfmj.com. In the meantime, thank you for watching Weather for Weather Geeks this week. Enjoy the rest of your Friday night. Have a great weekend, everyone. I'll see you on Monday.